Um, I'm the chair of the security committee um, for RISC V. Um, we're basically looking at the strategy for security across the RISC V ecosystem. And fundamentally, our strategy is to basically make security intrinsic in RISC V, make security part of um, everything we do, make it a basic feature of, of hardware, firmware, and software. Um, and that means thinking about security at all aspects of the SOC, from secure root of trust, identity through attestation, isolation, right through to the, the new emerging things like um, confidential computing. But we also need to help our uh, RISC V adopters by publishing guidelines, recommendations that allow them to map the security features that we have. So why do we think we can do this? Well, RISC V is a clean slate architecture. So it's a unique opportunity, really. Uh, we're not a massive juggernaut that can't change direction quickly. We're, uh, we can learn from the lessons from the past 40 years of industry. We can adopt the new innovations in security, pick up uh, the latest research because we're open. We can, research, we can collaborate with everybody and anybody. Um, like we had some great talks with the Cambridge guys uh, yesterday. Um, and also we're royalty free so everyone can pick up and use what we come up with. Um, so what's in scope for us? Well, um, it's the usual set of uh, security requirements across all of the different workflows from embedded application through to server. Um, we need to um, basically prevent the side channel leakage, uh, microarchitectural side channel leakage. So that's the Spectre meltdown class of attacks. We need to prevent code reuse attacks, so that's um, basically ensuring control flow integrity. Uh, we need to be fast and performant, so we need crypto acceleration. Um, memory protection, fairly standard. We also need isolation, compartmentalization, leading on to trusted execution environments, applications protected from each other, and also confidential computing, where it's, which is basically applications protected from the system that they're running on, which is an interesting challenge. Um, and to enable all of this, I know um, Philip's talked a bit about this, but we also need a comprehensive ecosystem. So we need software, we need firmware, we need tools to make things work. Um, and we also have to basically ensure that we're compliant with emerging standards. And when things do go wrong, we have an incident response team. So how do we do this? Well, the main document we're working on that ties it all together is the security model. So this document effectively states all of the goals and rationales for RISC V security. Um, it defines the scope of security that we have, but it also defines the threat model. Uh, more importantly, it also defines the things that we don't consider in our threat model. Um, it's a bit like uh, an a la carte menu. So it's going to have all of the features, all of the threats, allows people to choose from the menu what they think they need. But not everyone's an expert in security. So it's also going to have a set menu. It's going to have recommendations minimum sets of requirements for a given application, and that's going to map to the standard profile documentation. So you'll, you'll basically come along, if you want to be compliant with a RISC-V profile, you'll pick the set menu for that profile, and then you can add on the side dishes from the security uh, a la carte menu. Now, uh, of course, we keep talking about ecosystem, but without an ecosystem, there's no point having any of these security features without the right open source security software, without libraries, without reference implementations, none of this is usable, none of it works. So this is where, again, the standard plea, we need to help build this security ecosystem. We also need to monitor standards. Uh, we, we work with various standards bodies. I'm sure many of us here are in multiple organizations. Um, and we also need to talk to certification bodies so we can have provable security. We had an interesting discussion a couple of weeks ago with the organisation CSIP, who um, basically has optimised uh, certification for the IoT space. Uh, so now I'll go through um, a few of the actual things that are going on in security, a few of the features that we, we've worked on and the plans about what we're going to work on. Um, a bit of history, um, RISC-V's main security uh, group was called the TEE task group, and they primarily looked uh, at memory safety. So they worked on the um, enhanced PMP, which was an extension to the original PMP. Um, and we also have existing schemes for virtual memory, isolation between supervisor and user, and also guest to guest or hypervisor to guest isolation. Um, we've reorganized a bit, and that TEE task group is now a memory safety uh, special interest group. And there's a whole range of um, additional groups that we'll come on to in a minute. Um, some of those are looking at and are working on things like uh, an MPU, so this is a bit like an S mode PMP, and also an IO PMP. So obviously if you've got a complex SOC with other bus masters, 
you need a means to protect your memory space from those other bus masters. Otherwise, your PMP is easily circumvented through DMA, etc. Uh, robustness. So we have the J extension and pointer masking. This is a bit like a toolbox. It allows us to build certain things like software-based memory tagging, um, and you can also bound uh, the memory space that's accessible to a process through pointer masking. Um, and we have a bunch of things under development. Um, control flow integrity, so this is to prevent code reuse attacks. Uh, this is, looks like it's settling down around shadow stacks, architecturally protected shadow stacks, and labelled landing pads. So on uh, basically any conditional jump, you have to have the right landing point, otherwise the machine will throw an exception. Um, Microarchitectural side channel leakage, this is the interesting anomaly. Uh, RISC-V is fundamentally an ISA specification, and yet microarchitectural side channel leakage is dependent on microarchitecture. So how do we kind of bridge those two uh, together? Uh, and that's probably going to be something like speculation barriers, temporal fencing. But fundamentally, this is always going to be a trade-off between security and performance. So this is an, uh, an interesting and difficult area. But it's very necessary. We all saw the, uh, the media headlines from Spectre meltdown. Uh, cryptography, as I said, we need to be performant, we need to be fast, we need to be usable. Um, we have a ratified scalar extension that was ratified last year. Uh, this is, um, I think it's an excellent extension, it includes uh, an entropy source. The vector extension was really dependent on the ratification of the, uh, or rather the crypto vector extension was dependent on the ratification of the standard vector extension. So great work's been done, we hope that that's uh, going to ratify this year, or at least uh, freeze this year. Great progress has been made. And then that, that group will move on to post-quantum, um, which is obviously a, an emerging threat, something we need to really take seriously, uh, especially now NIST has ratified or, or will shortly ratify some of the candidates. Uh, trusted computing. So another, another group which has started recently, the application TEE. The idea here is we're going to define the software interfaces that allowed you to, allow you to build a, uh, an application class trusted execution environment on top of the existing ISA. Um, but we realise that there will be extensions that can improve performance, can um, also improve security. Um, and we need a roadmap from application TE through to um, confidential compute. So this is, this is the challenge where we have fundamentally an application or a VM which doesn't necessarily trust the computing base it's running on. Obviously it has to trust something, so we need to minimise the, the trusted computing base that the uh, the confidential VM or the application needs to rely on. We need to be able to attest that. So that might involve something like um, an additional context in M mode to reduce the trusted computing base. It might not. This is, this is a proposal at the moment. It's very early days. Um, and of course, attest attestation is really critical in this area. Um, future potential, things that we're really looking at. First one is lightweight TE. So if we do end up with an additional context in M mode, which we may or may not, um, but that could be reused, for instance, for secure function calls, for something that would allow a lightweight TE on an embedded device. Um, and also, all of this could easily be replaced by a capability-based scheme. Um, so we're, we're very excited that the Cambridge came and gave us a talk yesterday. Um, was it yesterday? Or the day before? <laughs> and they're all merging into one now. Um, but we were definitely looking at uh, capability-based solutions in, in general. Um, of course, when it all goes wrong, what do we do? Well, we need to track um, and we need to triage and then we need to make a, a sensible response to any security incidents. So we have a security incident response team. This is now up and running um, and there, will, there are disclosure email addresses, etc. So we are evolving into a more mature, um, grown-up organisation with taking security seriously and dealing with it in a, in a more um, commercial way. So where actually are we? So I'll quickly go through the roadmap. So as I say, about um, nine months ago now, Manuel and I took over the Security Horizontal Committee. At the time, I think there were three groups. There was the Trusted Execution Task Group that was really doing everything. So that was Nick's group. Um, doing a great job, but just too overloaded, um, too many things to do. So we've reorganized. And this is the organization we've got to in the past nine months. There's been a proliferation of new groups. Um, we have the security incident response team at the top. We have task groups looking at security model. This is the, the, this critical tie it all together document that defines everything. Um, the security HC is also looking at the ecosystem, reference implementations, etc. 
We have a trusted computing SIG, which is looking at the application TE confidential compute, and we'll look at capability-based um, computing. That's run by Suresh. Um, there's a blockchain SIG, who are looking at the implications of running blockchains. They've published a white paper. Um, and then the crypto team, we've, as I say, we've ratified Scalar. Vector's very, very well advanced, post-quantum. Um, the TE task group is, is evolving into a general memory safety SIG, um, because memory safety is something which is ongoing. It's not, a, not really a point solution. Um, and, but there are specific point solution task groups for the S-mode MPU, probably moving on to something like M-mode isolation, additional context, etc. The IOPMP, really critical. And then pointer masking, that's a part of the J extension, which is going to ratify fairly soon. And finally, the microarchitectural micro side channel leakage SIG. This is the strange anomaly where we have to influence the microarchitecture from the architecture. Um, things we're actually going to do this year, this is the ratification plan. Um, things that are on, ongoing. Top of the list, the security model. So there is already a version that you can go and review, you can go and look, you can contribute to. Um, it's work, very much work in progress. All contributions are very welcome. Um, other things that are quite well advanced, there's a good proposal for the application TEE. Uh, control flow integrity, fairly well advanced. But the most, probably the most, or the furthest down the track at the moment is the vector crypto. Um, S-mode MPU, IOPMP both had a lot of proposals that were already in place. So really those task groups are looking at uh, consolidating that and coming up with a consensus. And then finally, slightly longer term, but well underway, is this uh, interesting challenge of microarchitectural side channel leakage. So that's a, a quick overview of where we are. Um, where do we want to be in five years? Well, our horizon really is having a security model that, that really pulls it all together, uh, describes risk fives capabilities, how you integrate uh, into your system in a secure way. Um, enabling all of that, we need the tools and the software support. Um, and then fundamentally, we have to have protection against Spectre meltdown class attacks. We really need to have um, code reuse uh, protection, so control flow integrity. Um, we've, we've got a fairly good um, ratified extension for, for, for Scalar Crypto, or rather a very good ratified uh, extension for Scalar Crypto. By then we'll have post-quantum, we'll have vector. Um, memory isolation, trusted execution environments, and confidential compute, all of those things are well underway. I think we all understand the need for them, but it's an interesting challenge. And finally, um, blockchain. So blockchain's clearly not going anywhere, um, and that SIG is going to continue its work. How do we do all this? Well, we've gone from one group, or rather two groups, last summer to, I think there's 11 or so now, uh, and we need your help. So it's the usual plea. I'm sure most of you are already contributing, but if you know of anyone, any security expertise, um, drop us an email, talk to us offline. Um, your contributions would be very welcome. Thank you.